Throughout my career as a nature photographer, I of course have spent a lot of time in the digital darkroom processing all of my photographs. And over the years, I have developed a number of tips, tricks, or hacks as the internet likes to call them in order to enhance these photographs in a way that you may not have initially thought of at first. So in this video, I'm going to be covering 17 tips, tricks, and hacks that you can use in your own photographs in Lightroom. So this first tip is something I like to call sun glow, and this helps to bring depth and atmosphere and just a little bit of drama into your photograph. So you can see here, I have this beautiful forest scene uh, with the sunburst coming through, but I want to add a little bit more pop, a little bit more emphasis to this sky. And I'm going to do that by going up here to our masking panel and clicking on a radial gradient. I'm going to make a big radial gradient, super wide, make sure the feathering is all the way at 100. And then I'm going to take our dehaze, and I'm not gonna add positive dehaze, that makes it look ugly. I mean, I'm actually gonna go negative on the dehaze, somewhere around 20 or so, that looks good. And then I'm gonna take the clarity and also give a little bit of negative clarity, somewhere like that. And then just to sell the effect and make it be a bit more cohesive, I'm gonna take the blacks and I'm gonna raise the blacks. I'm gonna take away some of those blacks. And then we can see as I toggle this off and then on, off and then on, you can see how just a simple radio gradient with these effects has added so much more drama to the photo. Next up is easy dust spot removal. I'm sure everyone watching this video is well aware of the healing brush tool in Lightroom. And then if you go down here to the bottom left and quick click on visualize spots, you can see all of these little spots in the photo. But unfortunately, if your image has a lot of very distinct textured clouds in the sky, the dust spots can kind of hide in the texture in the clouds and it can be more difficult to differentiate where they are. And so this technique allows you to very easily visualize those. Now we're gonna go down here to our dehaze slider and we're gonna crank that all the way up to 100. We're gonna take our clarity slider and crank that all the way up to 100. And then we're gonna take our exposure slider and bring that up as well. And now if I zoom in here, we can very easily see where every single dust spot is. You can see in this one, I had not cleaned my sensor in a very long time, so there's a ton of them. But now none are hiding the clouds and I don't have to sit there with that stupid little slider on the visualized spots. I can see where every single one of them is. The next trick I wanna talk about is color balance or balancing color throughout your photograph. You can see here in this photo of the Grand Canyon, I had this beautiful orange sunrise and it's casting this orange light onto the landscape. But the problem is it was actually too good of a sunrise. And what I mean by that is that it was overwhelmingly orange and that may work in some areas where the landscape is not also orange, but coupled with the red rock at the Grand Canyon, it just makes the entire photograph overwhelmingly one color. The problem is if I try to take the color temperature down, it makes the sky look okay, but then it takes away some of the punch from the landscape. So we're just going to balance the color separately by creating a mask of the sky and then I can very easily take the color temperature down to a more reasonable level. So let's go ahead and look at this, the before and the after and the before and the after. And that just helps create a better color balance throughout the photograph so your eyes are not fatigued by this overwhelming sensation of one color. The next hack I wanna talk about is boosting your dodging. Now by dodging, I mean selectively increasing or enhancing some of the highlights in your photo and just brightening parts of your photo in specific areas to help convey depth and just help uh, better the visual flow of the image. You can see in this photo, I have this interesting rock formation on the left-hand side, and then kind of back here, hiding behind these rock formations is where the sun was. And you can almost see a color cast or a warm glow on the side of this rock formation here. So we're gonna first start by dodging. We're gonna just create a new mask here. We're gonna use a brush. I'm gonna take my whites all the way up to 100 and make sure my feathering is at 100. I'm gonna shrink my little brush size here and I'm going to brush on dodging like I normally might if I am simply dodging a photo. 
something like that. Maybe a little bit on the underside here. And if I toggle this off and then on, off and then on, you can see I've added a little bit of extra oomph to the photo, but it's not quite there yet. I am going to add a little bit of a color cast to the photo by trying to match it with the color already in the sky. So I'm gonna go over here to our color overlay tool and I'm just gonna try to eyeball and match with this color in the clouds. Maybe somewhere around here, a little bit less. You don't have to be too heavy on it. And there we go. You can see if I turn this off and on and then off and on, you can see it's almost as though the sky is casting that color strongly back onto the landscape. And it just makes it a little bit more exciting, just adds a little bit of extra oomph to the photo. Next up is Blue Hour Glow. This is one of my favorite times of the day to photograph is during the blue hour or during twilight. I just love kind of the soft light that blankets the landscape. But sometimes when you get home, that uh, soft light ends up being a little bit diminished in the raw files. So this is a quick way to help bring some of that glow back. We're gonna go over to our masking panel. I'm gonna create a new mask, select the sky and then invert that so we're selected on the landscape. And then I'm gonna crank the whites all the way up to 100, and then take the exposure down minus 0.3. And then we can see the before and the after, and the before and the after, and it is a very subtle adjustment. By increasing the whites, I'm just helping bring a little bit of that glow back into the photo, and then I take down the mid-tones a little bit with the exposure. So it's just enhancing that soft light. So this next photograph, I wanna talk about something I employ on just about every single one of the photographs that I edit, and that is called light direction or visual flow. You can see in this photograph that I have a few key elements. I have this tree right here in the center of the image. I have another tree back here. And then of course I have the brightness of the sun and Unfortunately, there's also some elements in the photo that I'm not super thrilled with that my eye is drawn to. You can see this bright blue patch up in the corner over here, and then down here at the bottom, kind of curving around, my eye is also drawn to the texture in the sandstone. Whereas I want these three parts of the photograph to be the main visual elements, and I wanna take my eye away from these other parts of the photograph. And I can do that by lightening and darkening these parts of the photos. Let's go over here to our masking panel. I'm gonna create a radial gradient and I'm going to create a very large one right over these three elements, something like this. Let's make it a little bit bigger, a little bit wider as well, just like that. And I am very easily going to just subtly increase the exposure by about plus 0.3. I'm also going to increase the color temperature and raise the blacks just a little bit. Let's go ahead and look at that before and after and before and after. It's a very subtle change, but just by slightly brightening these areas, it just draws our eyes to those spots and makes it more apparent. Now to darken the rest of the photograph, I'm very simply going to click on these three dots. I'm going to say duplicate and invert the masks that were already created. And there we can see I have this overlay of all of the spots except which we affected the first time. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to really widen this mask, go very big. And then I'm going to take the feathering down a little bit. I'm going to zoom back in here. And then I'm going to subtly take the exposure down just a little bit. Let's refit that to the screen. And let's look at that before and after any masks are applied. So before and then after and before and after. And you can see just how a couple of simple radial gradients applied to the photograph have really redirected our eyes to the important spots. So the next thing I'm going to do to this photograph is something I like to call clarifying the highlights. I'm sure everyone has messed around with the clarity slider at some point. If you bring it all the way up to 100, sometimes it can make the image look a little bit funky. Honestly, it looks like all of my images from 2009. Uh, it doesn't look so good applied to the entire photograph though. 
And a trick I've learned is that it does look good when you apply it to just the highlights of your photograph. So let's go over here to our masking panel. We're gonna create a new mask with a luminance range. And I'm gonna select something down here or so. Looks like the luminance range didn't work exactly as I had planned. So let's go something like this. I'm gonna feather it out, something like that. And then let's go ahead and subtract the sky out of this photo because I don't wanna be adding clarity to the sky. And then maybe back here, I'm just going to subtract with a brush and just like that, just so I don't add clarity way back there. Let's go ahead and see now, if I slide this slider up, it actually adds a very soft kind of subtle texture, really makes these leaves pop a little bit more off of the trees, just makes it a little bit more visually interesting. We can see the before and the after and the before and the after on this. Just another technique to help make the photo that much punchier. Right. This next hack is something I like to call believable saturation. You can see in this photo here, uh, I like the composition, but the saturation needs to be increased in the photo. It's just very flat right now. But the problem is if I start increasing the saturation, uh, it starts looking okay, but the foreground is a little bit too saturated compared to the sky. If I take the saturation back to zero and increase the vibrance, it kind of goes up a little bit more evenly in the sky, but then for some reason the purples got really weird in the landscape down here. So instead, I'm gonna come down to the color calibration menu, and I'm going to take the blue primary channel and increase the saturation on that one only. If I increase that to 100, it overall just gives a more softer amount of saturation applied to the image. And for whatever reason, just the blue channel works best. Uh, it's just gives a, a more believable look to the saturation and it's just a better overall way to add a little bit of color to your photographs. All right, we already talked about sun glow. This time it's going to be moon glow. This is super easy. Just gonna go over to our masking panel. I'm gonna create a new mask. I'm gonna do a brush. Make sure my feathering is all the way at 100. I'm gonna turn my flow up to 100. And I'm gonna make a big click right where the moon is, just like that. And then all I'm gonna do is increase the exposure just a little bit, just like that. This is a super, super simple trick. It takes almost no effort and it's just a little bit of a way to increase visual interest in your photo when you have a moon like this. So let's go ahead and toggle the on, excuse me, the off, the on, the off, the on. You can see super subtle adjustment, but just adds a little bit of something to your photo. Next up, I'm gonna show you how to create a very soft and subtle Orton glow to your images. And this technique is best applied to photographs that already have a little bit of soft light in them. So we can see in this photo, I have this nice arch and a lot of soft light coming from the sun back here. So we're gonna go over to our masking panel. We're gonna create a new mask based off of luminance range. And we're gonna select the lights over here. Maybe we can maybe feather that out a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. Let's do something like that, just a soft amount. And let's go over here to our clarity slider. And instead of increasing the clarity like we did in the other photograph, we're actually gonna go, gonna go negative on the clarity go all the way to 100%. And we're gonna increase the exposure just a little bit. Gonna increase the color temperature. And then we can go ahead and toggle this off and then on and off and on. And it's just a subtle way of adding that kind of soft Orton glow to your photo. For this next photo, I wanted to talk about night sky calibration. Now, oftentimes when you're photographing the night sky, the colors end up a little bit strange. Even if you set the color balance or the white balance of your camera, different things like air glow or just different atmospheric haze can change the overall look of the night sky. So this is a little trick to get it, get the night sky to just look a little bit more natural. So we're gonna go over here to our masking panel again. I'm gonna create a new mask and select sky. And the trick to getting this to look more natural is in the beginning to make it look unnatural. The trick is to actually increase the saturation all the way up to 100. And then we can really see 
which colors need to be balanced more. In this case, I can see the photograph is overwhelmingly uh, blue, or excuse me, the night sky is overwhelmingly blue. So then we can just take the color temperature up a little bit to have the colors a little bit more balanced. And then maybe I wanna add a little bit of magenta tint in there. And we're gonna take the, the saturation back to zero and we're gonna turn this off and then on and off and on. And we can see it's just made a little bit more natural look for the night sky. Next though, I want to add something I like to call nebulosity to the photo. This is kind of a, a silly word that my friend Johnny Adolphson and I came up with on a workshop a while ago. And this is something that I use to um, increase the nebulosity or just make the dust in the Milky Way kind of right where the galactic core is a little bit more exciting and make the photograph pop a little bit more. So we're going to go over to our masking panel again. I'm going to create a new mask, come down to radial gradient, and I'm going to make a big, big fat radial gradient right over the center of the Milky Way. And I'm going to really spread this out. And then I'm going to take the feathering down a little bit more. Now, of course, this is also affecting different parts of the landscape. So I don't want to do that. I'm gonna go over, click on intersect with select sky. So not affecting the landscape as well. Then I can come down here to clarity. And then I'm gonna bring this all the way up. And we can see as I'm starting to do that, I can watch the nebulosity increase. Unfortunately though, the clarity slider also takes away a little bit of saturation and it can make the blacks a little bit too strong. So to counteract that, I'm going to increase our saturation here up quite a bit. And then we're also gonna take the blacks up as well. Something like that. And let's go ahead and toggle this off and then on and off and then on. And we can see how I've increased the nebulosity of the photograph. Next up, we're gonna talk about grounding the image. In this photograph, I really like the composition. I've got a couple of key focal points here in these hoodoos and then of course this amazing rainbow but unfortunately one of the brightest elements in this photograph is something that i don't want to be bright it's this landscape down here the ground it's really taking my eye away from the important parts of the photo so very easily i'm going to create another mask and i'm going to choose a linear gradient this time i'm going to start from just outside of the photograph and i'm going to hold down shift to lock it into place up to around here and then I'm going to very easily just take down that exposure I'm going to go quite heavy on that almost taking down an entire stop and let's go ahead and look at that before and then after before and after so very easily just by using this one linear gradient we've taken away all of that attention from the bottom of the photograph and this is something I do to quite a few of my photos Oftentimes it will need it from the bottom. Sometimes it needs it from the top if it's a really bright sky, but it just helps kind of ground your photograph. Next up is water texture. Now, oftentimes when you're doing long exposures in scenes that include water, you end up with this kind of ethereal, very soft look to the water. And it generally looks pretty good, but sometimes you want to add a little bit of texture back in or just add a little bit of texture to certain parts of the photo. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in this next shot. So we can see here, I have this really nice shot of this canyon and I've got some nice water coming through it, but it's a little bit too blurred out for me. So I'm again going to go over to my masking panel. I'm gonna create a brush and we're gonna increase the clarity all the way up. I'm gonna take my flow down to about 50 and then I'm going to just brush on a little bit of clarity just in different parts of the photo that I want, especially down here in the whites, somewhere like around here, maybe over here a little bit more and something like that. And then it's a little bit warm. So maybe I could even take down the color temperature just a little bit as well. Let's go ahead and look at this, the before and the after and the before and the after. And if that's too strong, you can easily come up to the amount slider here. This is almost like the opacity slider in, in a Photoshop. And then I can take this all the way down and then just back up, maybe somewhere like that. 
see before, after, and it's just a simple way to bring texture back into your water. Next up is forest light. You can see in this photo that I have a pretty interesting composition. There's this, uh, you know, kind of unusual foreground leaf, it kind of leads back into this waterfall, and then a little bit of light back here. The problem is that it's not interesting enough. I want to make this pop a lot more. Right now it looks very, very overcast, uh, which it actually was very overcast that day, but I don't want it to look overcast in the photo. So I'm gonna go over here again to my masking panel. I'm gonna create a new mask. I'm gonna do a radial gradient. I'm gonna make a big one right over here at the top where the forest is, uh, excuse me, where the forest is ending. I'm gonna do like that. And then I'm going to bring up the exposure just a little bit. I'm going to increase the whites by quite a bit. I'm gonna also increase the blacks a little bit. And then because I'm kind of emulating where the sun would be coming in, I'm also going to increase the warmth just a little bit. So just like that. And then we can see the before and the after and the before and the after. And again, it's just one quick radial gradient, but it makes a big impact on the photos. All right, next up is sand dune depth. Uh, I love photographing sand dunes. They're a lot of fun but sometimes you want to add a little bit more depth to the photograph, and this is a quick way to do so. So we can see here, I have this nice photo of the sand dunes, a lot of rolling hills here, uh, and I'm going to add a little bit of depth by increasing the lights or dodging the lights of the tops of these hills or the crests of these hills. I'm not gonna do that with my brush though, I'm actually going to do this with a luminance range. I'm gonna come over to my masking panel here, create a new mask, come down to luminance range, and I'm going to select kind of the brightest spot on one of these dunes here, just like that. Looks like it's a little bit too much, so I'm gonna take this down, maybe take away some of that in the feathering, and then I can see it's also selecting some of the sky, so I'm going to subtract a color range, get rid of all of the blue there, and now I have just the tops of the sand dunes selected. Then I can go over to my whites, increase those a little bit, and then we can toggle this off and then on and off and then on. And you can see, again, super simple luminance range has added a ton of depth to the photograph of these sand dunes. And last but not least, I wanted to talk about something I like to call rim light. In this photo, you can see I have the nice sun. I've got this beautiful shadow and bright spots down here leading up to the sun. And then I've got this very interesting hoodoo off on the left-hand side. For me, the issue in this photograph is that this hoodoo doesn't have enough light on it. It feels like it's kind of in shadow, and I want to change that. So again, I'm going to go over to my masking panel here. I'm going to create a new mask. I'm going to choose a brush. I'm going to make sure, again, the, the feathering is all the way up to 100. And I'm going to just brush on here, an overlay, kind of going over this part of the hoodoo, back a little bit more, something like that. And then of course though, this is also going into the sky. I don't want this effect to go onto the sky as well, so I go over to subtract, select sky, and then I can very easily start increasing the whites a little bit. I can increase the exposure just a little bit, and then I can even add another color cast to it, something like that. And then we can go ahead and toggle this off and then on and off and then on. And when you look at it, it looks like it was there all, all along and it's added that visual interest that I need on the hoodoo to make sure that it is still a focal point in the image and that it's not just in, sad, in shadow and kind of an afterthought. So there it is guys, those are 17 tips, tricks, and hacks that you can use to enhance your photographs in Lightroom. I'm sure there are thousands others out there. If you know some that I didn't cover, I would love to hear about them in the comments below. And once again, I do wanna thank you for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks.